Okay, so uh, today we're going to do assignment eight, which is uh, going to read uh, chapter nine, section six in the book. We'll do an example problem here, and then there's only three problems, so this is a pretty short assignment. Um, I'd like to uh, review the center of mass with you guys um, for particles now. And then uh, from that, we'll talk about, uh, we'll derive an expression for the velocity of the center of mass. And then uh, from that, we can get the momentum and the acceleration of the center of mass. And then we'll talk about what Newton's second law has to say about a system of particles. And then uh, we'll talk about an exploding projectile. This is kind of the, the fun application of this. And then, and then we'll do the example problem, hopefully. Um, and it gets the time to do the, the homework problems. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the center of mass for a system of particles. Okay, so what we have here is, uh, let me uh, zoom out a little bit. If you've got a bunch of particles in three-dimensional space, and they all have different masses, different locations, these could be anything from atoms to stars or galaxies, whatever. Um, they're in three-dimensional space. So we'll, we got to put an origin somewhere, x, y, and z. And each one of these particles has its own mass. And um, in each one of them has its own position, ri, with respect to the origin. And this Ri has an X, Y, and Z component to it. And so what we want to do is uh, find out where is the average mass in space. You know, where's that one point where all of these guys would balance if I had some magical gravitational field and I linked them all together? Where would they balance? That's one way of looking at what the center of mass means. And so um, what we have is an equation that lets us do that. We say that the, the center of mass is equal to, well, first you have to add up all the mass. How much mass do you have total? So we'll call that capital M. So capital M here is all the masses added together of all the different particles. And then we have the sum of each position times each mass. Uh, R I M I, and um, and that that gives it to us. Okay, so if you've got you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven particles, you got to do this seven times, and and they each have you know in three dimensional space, so that's twenty one different coordinates. You got to all you know you got to add up and figure out where that center of mass is, and it's going to be some location. It's going to probably if I drew this and these are kind of it's probably right around in here somewhere. Okay, that's probably the center of mass right about there. Um, now, what if this whole collection of particles, though, was in motion with respect to the origin? I mean, here I've drawn it as if they're fixed, but they can be moving. And maybe the whole thing is moving. Maybe they're all moving together, uh, you know. Um, this could be a collection of stars, and what are they doing? They're moving. Uh, together around uh, the, the center of the galaxy. And so uh, we want to know, you know, what's, what's going on here? Um, with, with What's the velocity of the center of mass? Well, if we have the position of something, we know what to do to get the velocity, right? We take the derivative of it. And so we take, we say the velocity of the center of mass is equal to the derivative of the time derivative of, you know, the, the center of mass. And so we're going to take this, the, the time derivative of this guy. Now, remember the, you know, the, the sum rule for, for derivatives. You know, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. And so what, I, th what that means is this, is that, uh, well, let's rewrite this a little bit. We're going to operate the derivative d dt on, um, well, it's 1 over the total mass. And I, I, I could have taken that out of the derivative. I should have. But 
Now, what, what are these guys? Well, this is, you know, uh, R1, uh, M1, and this is a vector, remember, plus R2, M2, plus, you know, dot, 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 plus the nth particle. Okay, and so now the total mass of our system, let's say that's a constant. So it comes out of the uh, derivative. But then we operate the derivative on each particle. And uh, notice what we get here. The velocity of the center of mass is going to be equal to, well, 1 over the mass, uh, total mass times, um, well, when you operate the derivative on, on this guy, let's just do it on one of them. Uh, we're going to say that this is d dt. Am I still on screen? Yeah. d dt of r1 m1. Well, the mass of the particle is a constant, so it comes out of the derivative. And I get m1 times v1. Right, because you've got um, uh, dr dt is, is v. So really, the velocity of the center of mass is um, 1 over the total mass times. Now, when I, when I, so I'm going to add up, basically, I'm going to sum, you know, mi vi. Right, I'm going to add up all the particles here. And so this gives me the velocity of the center of mass. So if I've got you know this particle right here has a certain mass and it's moving and this is moving and this is moving and this is moving, we just add all of them up um, and divide by the total mass. Well, let me ask you this. What is m times v? What is the mass of the particle times the velocity of the particle? It's the mo linear momentum of the particle, isn't it? So, um, so we can say that the velocity of the center of mass is equal to the total momentum of the system divided by the total mass. So we can write it like this. Um, this is what the book has done. The total momentum of the system divided by the total mass of the system. Okay. Right here? Oh, T O T for total. P total. The total momentum of the system. So you've added up, right? M times V. These are the individual mo momenta of each little particle when you when you uh, when you when you uh, when you add up all those momentum you know momenta I guess you get the total momentum and so you can think of you can use this or you can use this if they give you the total momentum now we can uh, do this again take what we've done here and so we've got velocity the center of mass let's start over here um, is equal to let's use the, the individual particle thing is equal to 1 over the total mass times the sum of mi vi and I'm just not bothering putting i equals 1 to n okay just but um, now let's talk about acceleration. What would I do to this to get acceleration? I, I would just do the same thing. And so I'm going to take the time derivative of the center of mass. I should put my vector hats on there. Well, this is going to be 1 over the total mass times um, the sum. Well, each little mi. Uh, or the, each little mass is going to be constant, so it comes out of the derivative. You just operate the derivative on this guy, and you get mi. And then, of course, 
dv dt is a, but for each little particle. So I think this kind of makes sense that the acceleration um, of the center of mass is equal um, to 1 over, you know, the total mass. Now, what, what is MIAI? Well, this is the net force acting on each little particle. So if you have a system of particles and you want to know, well, what's the acceleration? You divide, uh, take the one over the total mass, and then you multiply that by the net force, the sum of the net forces on each individual little particle. I'll call that F, um, Fi. Just make sure you know that this F is a net force on each little particle. Well, um, and this tells me something uh, kind of uh, kind of cool. Um, I can solve for the sum of all the forces acting on the little um, particles. And that's going to be equal to the total mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. So this is really Newton's second law here, isn't it? But now we're applying it to a whole system of particles. And we're saying that if you add up the net forces on each individual little particle, it acts as if, um, well, the, the, the net effect of all that is going to be an acceleration of the center of mass of, of the system. Now, uh, Here's a, a, a really easy application of this. Suppose um, here's the ground. And, oh, thank you. And let's say you just have a, a handful of, of different sized marbles. And you throw them up into the air. Okay, so here you've got all these marbles. Now, and they're all of different size. Now, all of these, uh, if you, you can figure out where the center of mass is, if you take a snapshot and, and figure it out, it's probably right in here somewhere, right? I don't know. Let's put a big one down here just to balance it out. So let's say the center of mass is right here. Well, there is a net force acting on each of these little particles, isn't there? And what is that net force? Yeah, it's, it's the force of gravity. So there's a net force, there's a net force, there's a net force. Now, these are all little MAs, right? So each mass is different. The acceleration is the same. It's 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. But what this does is that this, we can say, well, instead of doing all this, I can say, well, gravity is accelerating the center of mass of this system at 9.8 meters per second squared down. So when you throw these marbles, let's say you make a cartoon in your head, you throw the marbles up in the air, and let's say there's this little glowing blue spot in space, and it shows you where the center of mass of the particles is. Well, if you start, if you threw the marbles right here, right, if you imagine the center of mass leaving your hand, what's it going to do? it's going to be accelerated by gravity, kind of like this. So you'll give the center of mass some initial velocity. And what it does is that even though these particles are going off in lots of different directions, right, they're not all going to land in the same place. They're going to kind of whoosh. Um, well, we can, uh, the center of mass is going to act like you just threw a single object. And it's uh, going to obey this projectile motion and land right here. Well, maybe nothing lands there. But the center of mass lands there. Even if the center of mass, there's nothing at the center of mass. It's a point in space. Now, what, what that means is that all around here, when these marbles land, 
One's going to land here, 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 maybe here in front. I'll try to draw it in three dimensions. But they're all going to surround the center of mass. And in fact, that spot will be the center of mass of where your particles land. So it's kind of interesting. Even though these all these individual particles, you know, might be, you know, have their own little trajectories, you know, they're all, you know, flying different places, but the center of mass will uh, accelerate with, um, with the acceleration of gravity and all these system of particles act as if they're, they're one. Uh, they'll scatter around that center of mass. So it's kind of interesting how, how the, you know, I think that's kind of interesting how that works. Um, the same is true if um, you have an exploding shell. Let's say that you, um, um, so this is a, a, a handful of marbles, right? And I just throw the handful of marbles and they land. It could be dirt. You just go outside today. He'll be your lab for today. Go outside, grab some dirt and throw it. Okay, and it, it, the center of mass. Now, of course, there's a little bit of air resistance, so there, that's an outside. That's another force acting. But actually, uh, actually, I think that'll still. Uh, I think about that. But anyway, the center of mass. Um, all the particles will land around that center of mass, and it'll st still be the center of mass. Okay, I don't know if that made any sense. All right, now um, imagine the ground again, and I launch a rocket. A missile. Okay, so here's my missile, and and it goes like this. Now, if okay, so let's say let's say Clovis West is over here. Here's C W, <laughs> and then um, <laughs> and then um, sorry, if, if Clovis West is a wonderful place. All right, so we we go over this. And and we're gonna we're gonna uh, it's just let's just say it's like a potato cannon, okay? We're just shooting a potato. I know. No nuclear weapons. Okay. Now let's say though something terrible happens right here at the top of the flight, and the rocket explodes at the very top of the flight. So part of the rocket gets um, gets pushed this way, right? And part of the rocket here's the nose cone and stuff. Here's the tail. Um, gets pushed this way. Okay, that's what an explosion is when parts, you know, blow each other apart, right? They, but when they when they blow up, they apply equal but opposite forces to each other. So there's no net outside force acting on here except for the force of gravity. So this part will go faster, right? This part will go faster now. It's been pushed to the right. So it now has a faster velocity to the right, and it will land on this side of Clovis West. And then, yeah, I, I, I told you that something went horribly wrong, right? And then this part gets pushed this way, so now it's going slower, isn't it? So it goes, it lands right here. But the center of mass of the system is still right here the balancing point for these two masses will still be right here. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is do a problem very similar to this. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, it's on page... Am I still on screen here? Yeah. It's on uh, page 277. on page, and it's uh, example 18, okay, of your book. This is Surway, sixth edition, physics for scientists and engineers. Um, and I'll show you the example, it's right, right here. Uh, let's zoom out. Now, oh, I don't want you to see the I don't want you to see the solution. Oh, you have your own book. Never mind. Most of you do. Okay, so I'd like you to do this example right here. Uh, good luck. 